Meredith again from vidpromom.com and I'm back with, I think we're on day number 24 of 30 days of GoPro. 25? I think it's 25. Yeah, I think it's 25. So today I wanna to give you uh, an overview of GoPro's quick app for desktop. Now I have a couple of other videos that I've done on this exact subject, but um, GoPro is always always doing updates to this software because it's a fairly new software. So um, this one's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a little more up to date. And I'm just gonna dive right into my computer and show you what the Quick App for Desktop is all about. Okay, so I have GoPro's Quick App for Desktop open here on my Mac. Um, this is available for Mac or PC, but I use a Mac, so that's what I'm using right now. Um, I don't use this software very often, so I wanna give you an overview of what it does and why you would want to use it. So first of all, um, it has a couple of different things I wanna show you real quick. Um, down the left-hand side, we have media, which is what we're looking at now. These are clips and things that are on my hard drive, GoPro clips that are on my hard drive. We have a recent, um, option here and then we have edits which are uh, things that we have edited and saved as final videos um, within the quick app and then I do have a memory card plugged into my computer right now so under connected devices it tells me that I have a memory card from my hero 5 black so you want to make sure that you are signed in if you're not signed in it'll ask you to sign in uh, when you open it up so i'm already signed in here with my gopro.com account so this would be just your regular free account or your gopro plus account um, and then i want to show you under settings up here this little gear thing there um this is where you actually tell the app to look on your hard drive for your GoPro files. So if you have an external hard drive plugged in, you'll see that you have folders on that hard drive available or your regular hard drive. Um, so, you know, for example, my G drive is not currently connected. That's my external hard drive. So it tells me it's not connected. It can't scan that, but you can select folders on your computer um, on your desktop or wherever you might have some GoPro footage. Um, let's check VPM inbox. And so what it's going to do then is it's going to search that folder for GoPro footage. And we're only dealing with GoPro files here. Um, so you can't use files from another camera or from your phone um, with this. So what it's doing now is scanning this folder for GoPro footage. So while that's doing that, um, also down here, you have a couple of settings options. So it's up to you what you have checked or unchecked. Um, and then at the very bottom, you can choose whether you want your uh, units of measure to be set to imperial or metric. Since I'm in the U.S. and we're weird like this, we have imperial selected there. So um, you can change your um, settings to however, you know, whatever your own preferences are. You can also change your import location. And so what this means is when you are over here, let's say you have a memory card plugged in and you wanna import these files, that's where you're setting your like default import location. But you can also change where you wanna import things right here on this screen. Now, I already imported the files from this memory card, so I'm not gonna hit that blue button. But when you do, it just literally takes all the GoPro footage and still images that are on that card and imports them into this folder on your hard drive. So they're on your hard drive or on your external hard drive, wherever it is that you selected. And then they'll show up under media. Okay, so you have a way to kind of view them, see them, um, and and edit them. But those those clips are on your actual hard drive. Now, also here, we have some settings for the memory card itself. We can change the camera folder name, and we can see that um, it's telling us this footage came from a Hero 5 Black. It's telling us the firmware. And then we can have our 
uh, files automatically imported whenever we plug that particular card into the computer, or we can have it delete files from the card after we import them automatically. I don't like to do that. I always like to double check that that footage is, you know, actually was imported correctly uh, before we start deleting things. Um, so that's how that works. Now, over here, I see this is still syncing some things. So it's still scanning that one folder um, for some media. So now that we have our footage here, we know what we have. And we, if we want to do a little bit of editing with the quick app, um, you can do what GoPro calls automatic editing. Um, so it's cool because it's automatic, but because it's automatic, it's fairly limiting. But I kind of just want to show you what what all it does. So I already have um, some footage here. I'm going to select all of this sledding footage here. It tells me I have 13 items selected and it asks me what I want to do with that. So I could trash it. I'm not going to do that. I could just share it. I'm not going to do that. Or I could open it in create mode. And when I do that, it's going to open up that automatic editor. So I already worked on uh, a video here um, already. I'm going to hit clear and start over from scratch. So what we have over on the left hand side is going to be our media clips. And if you come through here and just move your mouse over these as fast or as slow as you want to, um, you're going to be able to kind of scrub through and view your clips. Now, if you tap with your mouse, let's just say right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a blue highlight tag right there just by hitting my mouse button. And I'm telling the quick app that I want that moment right there to be part of my video because that's an important moment. Now, if you have footage where you have used your highlight tag while you're shooting, those are gonna show up as these like orangey yellow dots here. And so you can tap those uh, with your mouse to get, to get them down onto your timeline down here. Um, so those just kind of give you a little bit of a clue of where your highlights are, right? So this is my, my kids sledding with my uncle. So um, basically I could just come through here and just say, oh, I definitely want that spot and this spot. And, you know, so you kind of go through here. Now you have a couple of options for the length of your video. You're kind of limited, but um, right now I have it set to 60 seconds. Um, if you have a 60 second video, you have, I think, 20 highlight tags that you can fit in there. Um, and then with 30, I think it's 10. And then we'll, we'll go with a 15 second video here. Um, so let's see. We'll just go until it tells me that I can't go anymore. Okay. So it tells me that I have, I have the maximum amount of highlight tags in this video. And then what it does is based on the music that's selected, which we have one selected already, it's called Feel the Love. What it does is it syncs up the jump cuts based on the music and where I set my highlight tags. So I'm gonna hit play. So that wasn't actually that exciting because I put highlight tags all throughout this one clip. So I'm gonna actually just select some of these and I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard or you can just hit the trash can there and come through here and make sure that I, oh, see there, right there, my youngest daughter fell. So we wanna make sure we get that moment, right? <laughs> so there she goes. And then we'll get this moment right here. And then I think we're good. Yep, that's, that's it. So I'm gonna hit play again. So the ending is a little bit weird, <laughs> but you can come through here and change, you know, change where you want your 
tags to be or not to be. Um, so like for example, like this one here is kind of boring. So if I hit delete on that, then it has deleted one of those, you know, actual um, tags. So now I have an extra tag I can put somewhere. We'll just put it there. And if you want to select these down here at the bottom, you can actually rearrange them a little bit, just like that. And if we wanted to come over here and change the music, now, if you have a GoPro Plus account, then you have like hundreds of different music to choose from. If you only have the free account like I have, then I think we have, what, 10 here? So when you select these and just hit play, You'll notice at the very bottom, you can see the waveforms of the song. And it's quick is going to essentially re-edit your video so that the jump cuts and things make sense for the song. So you can see the waveforms and you can kind of see how it changes a little bit. So there we go on that. Um, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick with this one here. Okay, and then at the bottom, I'm just gonna hit add to video. And it's going to essentially do that automatic editing thing with that song. And then down here at the very bottom, we have a way to select an outro, because by default, we have this um, quick outro. So if you want to get rid of that, come over here and just hit no outro and hit apply. And there you go. Now you can actually hit um, each of your clips. And if you hit the little pencil icon, then you have a couple things you can do. So you can fine tune where that highlight tag is. Um, so like, let's just move that to right there. Okay, so if you if you wanted to move it to the left or right, depending on what your footage is or you know how you know what your preferences are, you can kind of move your highlight tag a little bit. You can also adjust some of the color. So we have brightness, vibrance, warmth, contrast, and shadow. So you can play with these sliders here if you wanted to. And then you can also adjust the volume. So right now, by default, it has the music up at 100% and the source, which is the, the video clip itself, is down at 0%. Now, I like to have background noise. I think um, it really kind of adds to the whole situation. It adds to the, to the story, right? So you can do this for all of these. I'm just putting this at like... 60 or something and then hit apply so you can go through there and do that for all your clips if you want to or you could lower the music if you want to you could have no music if you wanted to when you're done editing and you've adjusted all of your highlight tags and your music and all that stuff all you have to do is hit save over here and we're going to call this sledding and i'm going to leave my quality as is I shot in 1080 30 frames per second I'm going to keep it there um, if you hit custom then you can change the resolution and the frames but I'm going to keep mine on the normal one there and then just hit save and what it's going to do is actually export your project as a video file so you can see over here under edits that this shows up and if I double click it it's going to open up here all right, so from here, you could share it. If I hit share, it's going to say, you know, you want Facebook or you want YouTube. Um, I'm not going to do either of those things. I never upload stuff directly from a piece of software. I always just do it manually from within the site. Under more options, we can get rid of it. We can open it up again in create mode um, or we can get some info. So it tells us the resolution, frame rate, when it was created, the size, bit rate, length, and all that kind of stuff. And then down here, you can also, you can grab a screenshot from wherever, wherever you want. If, if there was a good photo, let's see. 
you can grab a screenshot like right there you can grab a screenshot and save that image um, we could rotate <laughs> if we want to do um, so um, and we can create a shortened clip from from this video if we wanted to now we have a two second clip there <laughs> okay so I'm gonna hit cancel there and I'm gonna go back to media and so you can see where it saved that screenshotted um, where we grabbed a screenshot so it saved it there um, in our edits and if we right click on again I'm on a Mac so if you right click on this um, and say show in finder it's going to show you exactly where on your hard drive your uh, final edited video is so from here this is where I would upload it to YouTube or Facebook directly from my desktop okay um, so and it saved it into the folder that we selected in our settings Okay, and the other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could open this up in GoPro Studio, which is GoPro's more fully functioning um, editing software. You could also decide to open up any, any of these in GoPro Studio. Let's say like this, I could right click and hit open in Studio, or if I wanted to hit three of these things, open in studio and it's going to open up GoPro studio and it's going to just import those clips for us and get things ready to be edited from there so that's what the GoPro quick app is all about if you have never used it you may want to check it out um, it's really up to you it's a personal preference whether you decide to use this or not it may be handy for you or you may be way beyond some of the basic functionality so if you have any questions about using the quick app for desktop hit me up in the comments below this video. And don't forget to grab my GoPro settings cheat sheet from way back in video number one. Um, I'll link to that now and you can go grab it and I'll see you next time.